You know, um, these organizers of this conference did a wonderful job. They managed to convince Cameco to cut production last week and make every uranium stock go up 25 cents, 25 percent. So this makes this conversation a little bit easier. Because um, every conversation I've had in the last couple of years has been focused on what a great a model we have for high demand and low supply in uranium. But I kept, my sermon would be that we need less production, uh, supply disruption. And uh, finally, we have it. Those of you who follow uranium stocks know um, what Chemical has done, but also you, Honeywell today uh, announced they're going to be cutting some of their processing. And, and I think it's $25 bid right now as a spot price. So, that's, you know, what the best thing for low uranium prices is low uranium prices. Now, you wonder why uh, a group of guys from Kelowna, British Columbia, could win all these awards. And it's because this project that the team found is more, literally the most unique exploration project maybe found in 50 years. This is super, it's very large project, over 100 million pounds plus, 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 and it's 50 meters from surface in the best mining jurisdiction, in, in our view, in the world, Saskatchewan in Canada. So whether we Ross won it for technical or we won it as, you know, for the deals we did in 2013, and the most important one was the Mining Journal. It's a, it's a London-based group that picks projects they think are the most valuable exploration projects in the world. They picked us. Not, a, not based on uranium, but based on gold, copper, anything. It was considered shallow, large, uh, very um, high grade in Canada. Now, I started a company called Strathmore with the help of Rick Rule. And if you still own uh, that company, today you have four different shares in your account. From that, we split out Fission Energy, Fission Uranium, Fission 3.0. So in your account, we'd have, you'd have Energy Fuels, you would have Denison, you would have Uranium Energy, and, sorry, um, Fission Energy, and which became Uranium and Fission 3.0. In each case, our company has been built on the same principles that you guys are learning. Number one, you're contrarian or you're a victim. And the other thing that Rick often told us early was, it's your mind, your property, other people's money. So in each of these cases, whether it was Strathmore, we brought in Sumotomo from Japan as, as a partner for 50 million, or it was Kepco who gave us 44 million in fission energy, or it was a Chinese utility that two years ago gave us uh, 82 million. We've always taken the strategy that we spend X of money risking it, but the big money comes in from people who are gonna be the end users. It also means you've got an end buyer for your project. Now, despite what people think, there are more reactors today being built than at the time of Fukushima. Fukushima changed the way utilities bought uranium, but the demand for uranium continues to go higher and higher. Why? Well, you've got China that wants to get up to 200 reactors. America, United States of America, is the model for every country in the world how they want their energy mix between renewables, nuclear, oil, coal. They want the same mix. Right now, China only gets 2% of their energy from um, uranium, be 3% soon. But they want to go to 20. To get there, they've got to build 200 reactors. And But the names that catch me always off guard are names like Saudi Arabia, United Emirates. Why is Homa Cheap Oil so interested in nuclear power? Because they realize it's still the cleanest form of baseload power out there. Now, believe this or not, over the next eight years, utilities need over a billion pounds. They don't have it lined up. A lot of them run out in 2019, and everybody's out of uranium by in the early 20s. So the case for uranium continues to get better and better. And um, I think some of you who follow uh, what Rick uh, talks about in some of his blogs, you know that Rick's lowest performing stock in the last uranium market was 22 times his money. That's the worst he had. I know he made much more money with Paladin from three cents to $12. And part of it is utilities um, are their own worst victims. They do the exact opposite of what you're gonna do. You're gonna buy low, sell high. They do the opposite. They like to buy high and sell low. And the way they do it is they don't contract when times are tough and they don't prepare. 
Part of it is, is because a lot of them are work for like, a large utilities like a government. They're not in that industry because they're entrepreneurs. I mean, in this room, we got more entrepreneurs than all the utilities put together. So th there are opportunities for you because utilities are doing the opposite of what they should be doing. And so there's a huge gap coming up for uranium. And the good thing is there's not many good uranium stocks, in my view, that are out there all prepared, ready to go. And most of them are here, whether it's Denison, uh, Next Gen's not, but uh, Sky Harbor. There aren't many good names that I think that have got something or can turn into something. Now, this is what <coughs> you, utilities like to buy high, <laughs> sell low. If you look at this chart, the red line is the price of swap price of uranium. The blue is how they contract it. So you can see when the price is high, they like to buy more, <laughs> not the other way around. And part of it is uranium is a very small part of the overall cost of running uh, a nuclear plant. So they don't really lose a lot if they buy high and sell low. They just won't. So that's why you know, you're seeing uranium prices jump up so much. Um, I think it was $20 bid last week. The spot price today, this morning, is 25 That's a 25% increase in the commodity in the last few days alone. And I won't be surprised if it goes to 30 and 40 It can go much higher. Again, that is not fog. That's pollution in Beijing. And those of you who've been there will say this is normal. And this is normal. The only time uh, Beijing was ever smooth, sorry, it was, um, didn't have all this, it was during the Olympics, right? Um, the only time you can see the sky in Beijing is when it's windy. That's it. You know, um, it's the only place in the world you can smoke a cigar to clean your lungs out. That's just an excuse for me to have a cigar. Um, CGN, our partner, owns 20% of us. They, um, they will be the largest user of utility over the next two, three years. I mean, they're so aggressive. They fund projects like us. They buy and sell uranium, and they build reactors. They are the mothership of this industry. They spent over $2.5 million U.S. in due diligence before they invested in us. And by the way, they paid $0.85 cents a share. Today, the stock's still only 70 Now, why are we in Canada? Well, there we go. Grade is king. Any, anything in the world, grade is king. That's why we're there. You can see how it compares to every other part. Now, Kazakhstan has the one advantage that's ISL. So, it's, so it's, not, it's more about porosity than grade. We also have everything you need for uranium. We have um, you know, lots of mills, and we have, more importantly, a government that supports it. Now, this is the basin itself. Everybody told us to stay on on the east, which is the right side, that there's no uranium left. They said there's no uranium on the west, and it's all going to be deep. And, well, our team didn't believe that. We found a way to fly an airplane really, really close, probably illegally. Um, but they went so close they could sense um, boulders. And we found some boulders, and after that, we followed that upstream, and we made our discovery. So we were told not to go to the west. We did. And we went outside the basin. The, basin's, uh, the basin itself has got a lot of wet sandstone and basement rock. All the glaciers, in our case, wiped it all out. So it's a beautiful deposit sitting in basement. Now, why is it important that you're high grade, uh, obviously, and we're in Canada? The other thing is, why is it important to have a project close to the surface? Um, I can tell you, or we can look at historically, on the top are all the deposits. Down here, it goes from shallow deep to very deep. The, the gray ones have all been mined out. The green ones have not. The black ones are being mined out. So they always pick the low fruit, and that's exactly what Triple R is. It's shallow, 50 meters from surface, or 150 feet in America. Um, and, but it'll get mined first, because that's the easy fruit. I also believe it's an advantage, and I think because when uh, Chinese companies like sh uh, open pit deposits, they're not big fan of deep, and the only person to open, I think, deep deposits will be Cameco. This is our, um, the project itself. It's a large strike length. We made a new discovery, which we're happy to talk to you about our booth. Um, it looks a lot like where the big pounds were found, but this is almost uh, like a mile and a half away. So please come by and learn more about it. Um, tomorrow morning, if we were to say, okay, we're going to go in production, someone's done a, a, a PA on it, and they said it would be the lowest cost producer in the world, in the greatest region in the world. So that's why it's won the awards it has by third parties. 
it's large. Prior to Arrow and PLS, a big deposit in Basin was 40 to 50 million pounds. Now the standard is 100, 200 million pounds. So it's pretty cool what um, these two discoveries have done. So um, that's what the, the experts will tell you is that's what you need. So um, I run out of time. Please come by the booth. We've got even people know the project better than I do. Our technical team is here. And um, thank you.